Hello and welcome to Small Town Big Business, a podcast about doing businesses in small towns. I'm your host, Allison Hassler with Southern Illinois Vacation Rentals. And I'm Russell Williams. I'm director of Ethos Co-working Spaces and Small Business Incubator here in downtown Marion, Illinois. You are inside the Citadel building here on Tower Square Plaza. And thank you for joining us and thank our sponsors for making this possible. We want to thank Fowler Heating and Cooling, the Arcadia Wealth Group, Black Diamond RV and Harley Davidson, the Watermark Auto Group Foundation, Swinford Media Group, and our producers at Union Street Arts. And you can join the Small Town Big Business community wherever you listen to podcasts, including YouTube and Facebook. Subscribing is free, and you won't miss upcoming episodes that are released every two weeks. And today, our guest is Daryl and Joni Ross of Binkley Ross Funeral Home and about 20 other businesses, it Yeah, we like. just went through those. <laughs> I stopped counting at 10 businesses, but you're very much the serial entrepreneurs that we all, people who want to be entrepreneur, they want to start another business, and you guys have successfully done that over and over again. Welcome, and I'm excited to hear about all of this. Thank because, you. Thanks for having yeah. us. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Known, so, you, known you for a while now. Yes. You've been part of mastermind groups. Both mm-hmm. of you have been part of mastermind groups. And uh, I'm just so, in, you know, this is going to be a great interview. I'm just excited about that. We're excited Old to be here. Yeah. yeah. And you're saying your son, Jace, was kind of joking about you guys being on the yeah. podcast. <laughs> yeah, he thought, he thought it was pretty he fun. One of your big funny. supporters. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm excited to dive in because I am an entrepreneur, but I have a kind of a one track mind sometimes and I feel like I can't deviate. And so I'm excited to hear how you do it all uh, with as many businesses that you do have. But first, let's just hear about what you guys, what's your, what's your background? What's your story? Go ahead, Joni. I'm born and raised here in Marion. Mm -hmm. Um, So my background was started in business, really, helping him with our family business, the rental properties. Um, I oversaw construction when when we had that project going on. But I always had a burning desire to be in funeral service. And I think that stems from going with my mother as a child. She did hair in the local funeral homes, and she would take me along with her. And so I kind of grew up around that environment. So it's never bothered me. I've never been, yeah. you know, out of out of my comfort zone really being there. Um, so while I worked alongside with him and the businesses, I also was a cosmetologist myself and did hair for 18 years in the funeral home um, while my son was kind of growing up and I was able to be at home a little bit more, you know, when he was younger. And then when he got old and what junior high I guess is when I went back and Mm -hmm. did mortuary um, finished my degree my first degree is in business management Mm -hmm. and then I went back and did three semesters for mortuary Wow! Um, and then I had to go for two years well for 12 months really is what it's supposed to be for your apprenticeship so I had to relocate Um, we rented a place in Waterloo temporarily Um, he commuted back commuted back and forth and Jason and I moved up there for we stayed for two and a half years because I really liked up there and I liked the bosses which I worked is close for. to Mary but not that close yeah. it's about like the a, last six months I drove it every time I worked ooh. like I yeah that about was, an hour and a half maybe uh, yeah. yeah it's 91 miles from yeah. here to there and um that was a lot you know getting up at five o'clock in the morning driving in the fog rain didn't matter here I was going um and then we decided to do this it, opportunity came along to purchase the building we're in um, which was the old South Point Bank originally and then yeah. Um, and, and actually, a little short story there. I used to work there when it was the bank mm-hmm. years ago. So it's kind oh, of wow. like, it's gone full <laughs> circle. Now I'm back in Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Oh, you knew the building. Yeah, that's yes. awesome. Um, so that's kind of how, how that started. Yeah. When did you move into this location? You did a lot of renovations, mm-hmm. of course. December of 2020 is when we purchased the building. And then we were under renovation for a really long time because of the COVID. Everything got back ordered and slowed mm-hmm. down. Um, we've probably been fully open 11 months Since now. September, probably. I think, last year is when yeah. we fully opened. Yeah. So yeah. in early stages, we were doing gravesides and church services only because we couldn't have use of our facility at that point. Yeah. And now we're full service um, in any, anywhere you want to have it. We can have it at the funeral home or yeah. church or wherever. Yeah. Did we say the name? The Binkley Ross yes. Funeral mm-hmm. Home. Okay, good. Yeah. So... Do you uh, facilitate the funerals, or do you have a funeral director that is on staff? I am the licensed funeral director and embalmer, so I do all those aspects of the business. 
Um, my sister is now working with us as well. She is a pharmacist in her past, mm -hmm. um, but now she's helping out at the funeral home um, for the non-licensed duties. She helps me, you know, facilitate all the services and get prepared for that. And she goes out on calls with me and meets with families with me. And so, and then Daryl helps too on on all those things as well. So it's kind of a team effort. Yeah, yeah. that's really <clears throat> neat. So it's a new business for you, but you're familiar through Joni. Yes, what it yeah, takes in your business. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. you were totally supportive and oh, absolutely. Getting yeah, this started. she is very, very passionate about this business, and I mean, she just loves helping people. She thinks that this is, you know, to help people through the hardest time of their life, and it's it's really rewarding to her. And she's very, very dedicated to it and very good at it. You know, she's kind of what I would call a natural, and you know, to, to and comforting people. And what's so, your origin origin story? I'm originally from West Virginia. Uh, I left West Virginia, I was born and raised in West Virginia, I graduated from college in 1978, and uh, the company that I worked for back there at the time while I was going to school wanted to open a coal mining supply company in uh, Utah. So they shipped me to Utah to open a branch office for them out there. Uh, that was 1978. I spent eight years in Utah, uh, and then in 1986 they wanted to open a branch office here in southern Illinois. So brought me back to Southern Illinois to open the branch for them here. And then- But you had um, not been here before? No, no, yeah. no, that was the first time I'd been in Southern Illinois. Yeah. Uh, and then in 1993, I branched out and just started my own business, which was Quality Parts Company. It's a, an aftermarket parts business for the coal mining uh, industry. And really coal mining's always been my passion. I just have always loved that business. And, and I've done it now for 45 years and that's, really one of our primary businesses now. A lot of the businesses that we have are uh, support companies and spinoffs of that business. So uh, that's really pretty much where I... How'd you get involved in property management? Because you mentioned property management, it's PMA, right? In 1993, the, uh, the Clean Air Bill was passed and the high sulfur content in Illinois coal was, uh, you know, made it unmarketable. And, you know, a lot of the coal mines started closing down. My business really started falling off. And uh, I thought, well, you know, maybe I'll get in the rental, rental business to kind of subsidize my income uh, when I get older. And so I built a fourplex, bought some property, built a fourplex on it. And uh, when I built the fourplex, I partnered up with a guy after that. We built a little spec house, and then we started buying some properties, some rental properties, and... Things didn't really work out in that that partnership, so we went our separate ways, and you know we just started growing and expanding from there. But it, it, it primarily started because I could see the downturn in the coal business. Yeah. Uh, then the coal business came back. It's a very cyclical business, and you yeah. know it kind of comes and goes. Again, right now it's it's really good, but mm -hmm. you know that's a temporary thing because of the cycles in that industry. Yeah. But uh, you know then. The rental business actually got to be bigger than what I'd ever intended. I just thought it would be something to subsidize our income eventually, mm -hmm. but it's really turned into a, a pretty large business. You know, we have several properties and a property management company that, that manages those for us, and we own the property. So throughout the region, we have uh, properties in Marion, Carbondale, and Man Macanda. Okay. Uh, and that's pretty mm -hmm. much what it is now, right? Yeah. Yeah. We had some in Murfreesboro, but and we still have the ones in Murfreesboro, but we're in the process of getting rid of those. So yeah, yeah. And how many do you have? How many properties? Right now we have 167, I think. Wow. 167 units. That's yeah. not actual properties, but 167 sure. doors. So wow. And four bonus nightmares that I have. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. True. <laughs> no. <they're> true. <laughs> And how long were you involved in that business before you ten years started probably. yours? Probably. Okay, we yeah. did those developments for about ten years. Probably, yeah. Okay, and then you also mentioned the waste management business, Southern, Southern Illinois Waste Management. Southern Illinois Waste Management. Some friends of ours had that business, and uh, they had a third partner in the business who owned the trash business in uh, Asheville, uh, North Carolina, and he sold that business and wanted to retire, so he sold his portion out to us. Uh, so we own we own part of we own forty percent of uh, Southern Illinois Waste Container, which is a, a commercial and residential trash service here in in town. We do uh, the front end load pickup, you know, the front end dumpsters for the commercial. 
which were really the only front end uh, uh, service provider in the area other than Republic Service, which, you know, it's kind of a niche uh, area for us. So. Yeah. Yeah. So and from then, your perspectives, why Marion, Illinois? Why is this all work? in Marion because you're starting business and then you start another business then you join some other partners and why funeral home why, why does that work in Marion Illinois people I yeah. think it's people the connections we have um, we could just see that it was an additional service that was needed I mean we we have those things already here but just the relationships that we've built with the local people I mean this is my hometown yeah, yeah. And I, I really liked it when I was on my apprenticeship, but it wasn't home. You know, yeah. it just, yeah. you just know. Drew you back in. Yeah. 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 And you knew it would work. Yeah. I thought, yes. Yeah. And we also, I didn't mention this earlier, but we have Monty Blue um, on our team as well, helping us. So he yeah. sold his business. He's retired from there. And when we purchased the building we're in, um, he graciously agreed to come on board and help us get things started. So that's been very helpful too. Yeah. It's the relationships he's built, you know, the, yeah. the Families he's How long helped. has he been in business? Um, over 42 years. Is 42 or okay. wow. years. Yeah. Yeah. That's a major asset to have. Yes. Oh, huge. Yes. huge yeah. Yeah. And he owned two funeral homes. Here, or he owned one here in Marion and one in Goreville. Uh, then he mm -hmm. sold out to another company. And you know, like Joni said, he retired. When he did retire, he's been a major help to us. Yeah. Any questions I didn't know? He, you know, he's right there. So. Mm -hmm. And it seems like you guys have a lot of moving parts in <laughs> in your life and your entrepreneurship. How do you how do you manage it all? Do you have um, is it about finding the right people to you know lead the different aspects of your organization? I know you're very hands on with your uh, with right. the Meekly Ross uh, funeral home, but for the other pieces of it, the rental properties and the um, you said we mentioned earlier. Um, not on in the recording but you have a mowing company that kind of stemmed from having so many rental properties that you needed to take care of and several things like that um, so how do you how do you juggle it all absolutely it is the people it's the team that you put together you know you have to have good people to, in order to run any kind of organization and you know it's just uh that's what it is it's it's the people you, your team you can't do it without the team you know yeah so what does your day look like usually well <laughs> <laughs> i guess it's probably different every day right it's, it's yeah. different, different every day yeah so that's really hard to say there's just so many aspects so many different things that go on some days i'm working at the funeral home some days at the coal business you know other days the rental properties that not so much you know that's more about uh, i have a really good team that manages those for us so yeah. It's it really just varies day to day. Uh, when I get up in the mornings, I don't really. I might have a plan of what I'm going to do for that day, but I don't really know what I'm going to do for that day. Which sure. I think that's pretty much the way life is mm -hmm. with everybody, you know. Yeah. Because things come up that uh, that are unexpected, and but yeah, it's, that's a tough question. It's just I just kind of do what needs to be done for that day. So. And you still have family in West Virginia. I do. I have a brother still in West Virginia. And you brought some of the family, or some of the family followed you to, and worked for you here. Initially, my niece moved out here okay. uh, when she graduated from high school and went to beauty school, and she now owns a Genesis Hair Salon behind, yeah. behind yeah, the mall. It's a big, successful business. Yeah, very successful. Yeah. And uh, her husband owned the batting cage behind uh, the, uh, the hair salon, but I think now they've sold that. Um, Have you guys ever worked for anybody else? Because you, your family keeps starting new businesses. <laughs> <laughs> right. I used to. That's part of the reason yeah, I like working for myself. Yeah. 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 I know what that's like. To but uh, I lost my train of thought. What we, <laughs> you were mentioning uh, your, oh, my your niece, niece yeah. and, and family then, from West Virginia. Uh, my sister yeah. moved out. Her mother moved out mm -hmm. and uh, four or five years later. And she ran the property management company for us for a while. And then she's, mm -hmm. yeah, she, yeah. Now she's uh, uh, retired. And she still works some, but primarily is retired. And uh, then her youngest daughter moved out, and she's actually a massage therapist at Genesis with her sister. So, yeah. So part of the family's here. So the, our brother's the only one that we haven't convinced to move out <laughs> here, and we'll never convince him to right. move out here. He lives on a, on the river in West Virginia, and that's his roots. And that's uh, yeah. it's kind of like he lives on a. a, a perpetual vacation because it's front porch overlooks the river and you it's very relaxing back there yeah. very relaxing 
So but starting a starting new business, being an entrepreneur, it doesn't scare you at all, does it? <laughs> I can't say that it doesn't scare me. Um, but it's just, I don't know, it's just kind of like in my blood. It's just yeah. what I do. You know, it's yeah. just what we just kind of see an opportunity and then we just kind of go for it and hope for the best. You yeah. Know? So, and I don't know that hope for the best is really the right way to put that, but yeah, it's, uh, I've always got to be doing something new. You know, it's kind of like I lose focus of things that I've done for a long time. And I, I'm always, and I think that's kind of like the entrepreneurial spirit. You know, yeah. you just kind of have to just keep growing. You know, you always have, you always want a challenge in your life. That's the way I am anyway. So, yeah. sure. So you talk about seeing opportunities and then you know, turning those opportunities into a business, which I think you, sounds like you've done very well at. But one that we haven't talked about is uh, you actually recently uh, had a patent on mm. um, on a particular product. So can we talk about that a little bit and what, how you got that idea from in your mind to a patent product and getting that out into industry? Actually, our partner in the trash business, he was the one that came up with the idea. And actually, okay. he's come up with a couple ideas that we patented. And, uh, you know, the, the process, I mean, it's a long, drawn-out process. It takes about three years uh, to get a patent through. Um, but, you know, Mark, our partner, is he's, I would say he's a real visionary. And uh, you know, he came up with the idea. We saw the, the opportunity in the market because of the issues that we that we face as a, a trash uh, hauler you know we can see what the problems are with with recycling and uh, you know we had built a prototype of the product and and uh, applied for the patent and you know the patent was granted now we're in the process of marketing the the product so so what was the product or I'm sorry what was the problem that you saw in the trash business? With recycling, the Chinese used to buy a lot of our recycled products, and there was a lot of contamination in it. The price of the of recyclables really went down, and uh, you know they quit taking it because of the number of contaminants in, in it. And, you know, it, the recycling business is really a hard business to make money in because it's it's labor intensive, and uh, in order to most people think that they're recycling, but they're really not recycling the way that you're supposed to. If you put a plastic bag in a recycle container, then that contaminates the, the recyclables in that container. You know, there's only certain kinds of materials, plastics, glasses, uh, cardboard that are recyclable. Some of the plastics, a lot of the plastics are not recyclable. So, you know, people would throw food in the dumpsters and, and uh, can, you know, paint cans, various things inside of them that, uh, that contaminated the recycled material. Because, of, you know, a lot of the companies set out specific containers that you're only supposed to put recyclables in. Mm -hmm. Well, with this product, you can actually see through the container when the driver pulls up to uh, dump the recyclable in the container in the truck, and he can actually see through the, the container that and spot any kind of contaminants that may be in there. You know, it's not 100% accurate, but it does help in reducing the number of contaminants. That way, they, you know, the, the driver can alert the customer or the company can alert the customer that, hey, we're seeing a lot of contaminants in your recyclables. They can get with their employees and, you know, educate their employees as to what really are recyclable materials and what are not recyclable materials and uh, you know just start to reduce the, the contaminants that way just through education and um, you know that's a huge problem for trash companies because most recyclables that are picked up they actually end up in the landfill because they're they're contaminated you know people think that they're recycling and, and saving the environment but it's not really as uh, efficient as what people think that it is or it's, it's, it doesn't really work the way that most people think that it is so mm -hmm. it's just an op it's a way to help uh, more recyclables actually be recycled and less going to the landfills so mm -hmm. wow, but it's a really cool. new product that we're excited about you know we did just get the patent uh, 
I think it was approved a couple of months ago, and now we're really in the process of trying to trying to find the market for that. You know, as a like I said, as a hauler, we see the the uh, opportunity with it and the benefit in it. Now we just have to educate some potential customers on that. Yeah. So how did you did you find a prototype or uh, build a prototype of it? We built a prototype. You built it in house. Well, we actually had a, a, a fabricator in the area that has built some. Uh, other products for us that he built it for us so wow yeah that's that's really neat and so when you're uh, so after the prototype then how do you go about finding um, someone that is going to be able to mass produce your product is that research that you do do you have somebody else do that for you we do that that? research well we've done that research so far but Mm -hmm. you know that's one of the things we with the patent agreement, there's people that make dumpsters in, in mass quantities in the, in the country. So, you know, we're going to reach out to those companies and, you know, it's already a product that they manufacture. So it could just be an addition to their product line. And then we would do like a licensing agreement with them, you know, where yeah. we wouldn't actually, actually manufacture them. But, you know, we would be paid royal, royalties or, uh, so, you know, fees for the ones that they would sell. Yeah. It's kind of our idea. That's good. Well, you both have found opportunities in business here in small town Midwest. Um, What challenges have you found trying to create those businesses and grow those businesses in a small town in the Midwest? Has there been limitations that you've come across? Have there been challenges that you've had to solve? I don't think I've had too big of challenges. Um, I was talking to him yesterday about, you know, just being in the small town product availability is sometimes a little bit limited um, in a quick turnaround time Mm -hmm. you know you don't have everything just right here at our fingertips like you do in a in a big city Um, and then online if you try to go online if you can't buy local then you look at the shipping time and getting Mm -hmm. it here in time for the quick turnaround of a funeral I mean, those happen usually three to four days after death occurs so it's it's go time whenever you're in the process of planning that Mm -hmm. Um, that's probably been our biggest challenge is just special products that people want that we don't have just right here available. I think it's probably the only one I've really faced. Um, With the company being so new and, you know, it's just us pretty much that works there. It's, uh, mm-hmm. there's not really been that many huge challenges to overcome yet. You know, as the company mm-hmm. grows, there's going to be more yeah. personnel challenges. I would have to think, I would have to say is probably the biggest challenge that, and I don't know that that's small town specific. It's just, you know, th- th- your team is everything. And, you know, to, to when you run a business, the personnel is the biggest challenge. You know, learning to deal with the different personalities, trying to motivate people to do what uh, they, that needs to be done to achieve your goals. Um, but like I said, I don't think that's small town specific. Yeah. That's just... Generally, but because I know your mindset and you're all about growth, you you want people to become better at what they do, oh, absolutely. and that's real key to growing the team, mm-hmm. right? It's right. not just finding the right person, mm-hmm. but finding the right person that is willing to grow, right? 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 Yeah. And, and you, in particular, are really good at that, at, at knowing that you need to invest some money and energy and time and training and all those things if someone's open to that, right? Right. And it sounds like you do have uh, several partners in a lot of the different businesses that you do. How do you go about finding those partners? Are they established relationships that you have with with people already in the business world, or um, are you looking for very specific qualities when you go into a, a joint venture? Really, with the, the trash business is really the only business that we have partners in okay. now. Uh, I did have a partner in real estate business, you know, in the rental business, but like I said, that didn't work out. Partnerships are, are pretty difficult at times, you know, uh, and you really don't know your, you, know, you have to pay a lot more attention to what's going on in, in the business than what I did at that time. Uh, yeah, partnerships, that was a relationship, you know, current relationships that we had it was friendship you know when we got involved in that business yeah in business with friends i mean it's it's a slippery slope right yeah Mm -hmm. but it's it's been really great oh it is yeah Yeah. so i think you can make it work even with friends and family but Mm -hmm. you know sometimes that can be a little challenging but i don't know maybe we just got lucky and it's not been but (laughs) right right um 
And, you know, people have different ideas on how to do things. It's not that one of them is either right or wrong. It's just a different way to approach things. So you have those challenges. I mean, it's just like in a relationship with your spouse, you know. You have different ways of doing things, and there's going to be some disagreements at times. But it's just how you deal with those disagreements and, you know, respect the other person for for having their idea of, of how to do things. And, you know, you're not all... You're not necessarily always right, you know. Just allow them to be, to put forth the ideas and be open to to uh, you know weigh it out and see which way is the best way to go. So, you know, and I think that that's I know I know one of the questions that, that you showed us that you emailed us was what your strength is, and I think that is probably my strength is that I'm I'm very flexible, you know. I'm, let people have their ideas and let people do things that, you know, let them make their own mistakes and help, I guess, guide them and uh, maybe overcoming those challenges. And because personal growth, like you said, that's everything to me. I mean, I've been so involved in that over the years that you always have to grow. No matter where you are in life, you've always, there's always a, uh, well, how about this? You know, there's never anything that's absolute, an absolute, absolute. You know, mm-hmm. it's there's always an option. You know, I did a lot of uh, Tony Robbins seminars years and years ago, yeah. and I remember the first seminar that I went to. He had an exercise that he handed the person on, had a person on stage, and he handed him a book, and he said, "Okay, now I don't want that book in your hand." So they laid it on the table. He said, "Okay, now don't I don't want it in your hand? I don't want it on the table." So they laid it on the floor. Okay, I don't want it on the hand, on the your hand, on the table, on the floor. So then you know they would hand it to another person. So there's you always got to be looking for solutions and different ways because they're all they're out there. You yeah. know, you just have to find them, and you just have to keep asking. You know, what about this? What about this? Yeah. You know, so. It sounds like uh, Joni supported you in a lot of the business endeavor just early on, and now you're supporting her in the funeral home. Has that been an interesting dynamic to, to switch those roles? And um, or have, it sounds like you work together really well because you've been doing it for several years. Uh, but are, were there any specific challenges with with that, or um, has that been pretty smooth smooth operating? Who answers first? Who answers first? I mean, it sometimes has its challenges. I think it goes very smoothly, though. Um, he's willing to be there and help anytime he's needed. I mean, it is hard to do it as one person. So, yeah. um, especially in the middle of the night when calls come in. And yeah, that's challenging. That's yeah. challenging. But, um, <laughs> it's part of it. You know, we knew what we signed up for. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we're all in. So, yeah. when you're all in, you're all in and i think it's gone very smooth you know it's kind of odd to say that uh, to me it's odd anyway but i kind of enjoy it you know it's uh, it's something different it's uh he's a very much a people person so yeah it's yeah, a great but, opportunity to even though the surroundings are sad and and not as uplifting as he is normally but it's still an opportunity to yeah. to interact with folks and that's the, that's my favorite part of my job is yeah. The stories I get to hear while I'm making arrangements with them about their loved one. I mean, that's the yeah. part that keeps me coming back, you know, yeah. is hearing those. Yeah. My primary job at the funeral home is, is here, let me get that door for you. Uh, and yeah. I just love meeting the people, you know. Yeah, that's cool. I guess I am a people person. I just like people. Yeah. Know, so. Well, you knew Joni had a dream. Oh, right? absolutely. And you absolutely. wanted her to pursue her dream no yeah. matter what stage of life that might be in. Right. And for you to go back to school, get a degree, mm-hmm. and then internship, not here, but someplace right. else. I yeah. mean, those are major decisions in families' lives, but you've been very supportive. Both of you have been very mm-hmm. supportive of each other. And oh, and I'm very, very proud of her. I mean, she has done an incredible job, and she's extremely sincere. You know, she's passionate about the business. Yeah. And like I've told her before, I said, you can't hide sincerity because she just has a natural a knack with people to it's she it's comforting you know whenever yeah. she says a way to re, to relate to people that is it's it, it's a really comforting way that from an outside observer anyway i see that which i don't yeah. think well people don't see that about themselves but she is very very good at what she does 
and very passionate and real. Would you consider that your biggest strength? I think listening is probably one of the biggest strengths, which is basically what it takes with what he just said is mm -hmm. just listen. Yeah. And that's, that's my main job really is to hear, her, hear their story and then to tell it for them. Yeah. And with her saying that, I've actually heard families say she really listened to what we said. You know, she really yeah. listened to what we were telling her about mom. You know, she that's really because important. The, the detail that she yeah. puts into the to the funeral. You know, it's not just it's not just a funeral. It's like this, and she says it, it's a celebration of somebody's life. You know, and it, yeah, and it, she does. She really well, I mean, I think we all say. have stories inside, mm -hmm. and sometimes people get to tell them, and sometimes they're not outgoing like that and tell them. Mm -hmm. So it's I don't know. I just is there special questions or something that you can pull. When people I mean, I don't really have like a script. Yeah. Um, it's just kind of whatever I feel in that moment kind of is what I do. And it just seems like something always comes out of it. You yeah. know, like there's like one little thing that I pick up on. And yeah. So being present, mm -hmm. fully, fully engaged and I listening. I think that's to that. the most important part. Yeah, that's good. Good job. Yeah. We need it. We need it. Yeah. <laughs> we do. Yeah. Need more listeners in, in our lives. Yeah. Uh, so, how do people get a hold of um, hold hold of you with the funeral home? So, you can contact us through the website, of course, which is BinkleyRoss.com. Um, there's a tab on there if you have any questions or anything. You can it gets it right to us. Yeah. Um, you can always call us, and that's just six one eight nine nine seven 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 one. Anyone can always shoot an email as well, and it's BinkleyRossFH at gmail.com. You can reach us any of those ways or stop by even. I mean, yeah. we're, we're usually there unless we're out on service. And, you know, we're welcome to just take walk-ins if you need to ask a question. Absolutely. Do you see a lot of pre-planning at all? Is that something that you guys do? You know, it's do? really kind of picked up here lately. Um, mm -hmm. In the beginning, it, you have to be licensed in order to do um, pre -plan to sell pre-need, mm -hmm. which is basically a lot, of, a, a lot of folks don't understand what that is. It's kind of like a life insurance policy. Mm -hmm. um, it's taken out. I use a company called Investors Heritage. And what you do is you make that check directly to that Investors Heritage, and it goes into an account, and it grows, you know, over the rest of span of your life. And then at your time of death, there's enough growth there on that policy to cover the current day cost of that funeral. So you come in, you pick out exactly what you want for your funeral. I tell you how much this is going to cost. You write a check for that amount to that company, and then they hold it for you until your death happens. Hmm. And those policies, this is something else people don't know, are transferable. So if you take one out somewhere and then you move to Florida, okay. wherever your place of death, wherever you have your service, that's... That's where the policy is honored. So just because you take it out in Marion, Illinois, and then 20 years from now you decide you're moving, you don't necessarily take it with you at that time, but whatever funeral home serves you at the time of your death is who collects on that policy. So that's how that works. And that's confusing to people sometimes. Mm -hmm. They think, oh, well, I took it out there. I have to be, I have to go there. But mm -hmm. that's not how it works. That's good. Yeah. Well, the... Two things that are guaranteed in life is death and taxes, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. <laughs> so we it's talk something about that we could taxes in another interview. So, in trash. Yeah, yeah. in trash. trash. <laughs> that's right. So, well, that's really that's right. interesting. So, if anybody would be interested in learning more about the kind of more of your uh, planning planning needs, then mm -hmm. they can they can talk to you there at the funeral home Absolutely. about pre planning. Just come stop by, and I'd be happy to answer any questions, or you can call and make an appointment. And we do some, and more now that COVID's kind of behind us, we're having some plans to get out in the community and teach about those, um, where where we'll have like a lunch Good. and learn kind of yeah. situation. And oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. I love we don't that. have any on the schedule right yet, but that's that's coming. Well, in the past year, you joined Rotary Club, and mm -hmm. I, I really appreciate you guys being part of the community that way because, as you said in the very beginning, it's about connections. It's mm -hmm. about knowing people and allowing them to know you. And uh, and so organizations like Rotary Clubs kind of get passed over until uh, you have a purpose, you know, and you're engaged. And mm -hmm. uh, we appreciate you being part of that. 
Yeah, Aaron we Mary. enjoy it when we get to be yeah. there. It's, yeah. That's good. It's good. That's good. Well, Joni and Daryl Ross, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah, very pleasure. Very interesting. Great Appreciate it. You. Yeah. You can tell your son, Jace, you were very successful. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, show. He'll, he'll, he'll have to watch. Now. We'll get you another show in another place. So, yeah. <laughs> but thank you to everybody for joining us for Small Town Big Business Podcast and listening and watching to our podcast. I want to thank our sponsors again for making this possible. Fowler Heating and Cooling, Arcadia Wealth Group, Black Diamond Harley-Davidson RV, the Swinford Media Group, Watermark Auto Group Foundation, and Union Street Arts. Thank you again to Luke O'Neill. And look for the Small Town Big Business episodes wherever you listen to podcasts, including Spotify, Google Podcasts, Podbean, Amazon Music, TuneIn, and Apple. And remember, subscribing is free, and that'll give you upcoming episodes that are released every two weeks. I'm Russ Williams. And I'm Allison Hassler. Thanks for listening.